it's just a personal question, but uh, I, like I said, I traveled, you know, I got to how they do, you know, outpatient and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But your practice is so unique. Every single patient were your friend, more than a friend, I would say, in my eyes. Over the time, Paul, what I found out is that, you know, if you do a surgery to the patient, mm -hmm. there's a certain, you know, kind of indecipherable bond happens be between you and your patients. Mm -hmm. That's what I found out. They are not, uh, you know, like a born family or they are not a friend before, but it's something different, the relationship between the surgeon and the patient. That's what I found. So I kind of feel very sad and, you know, difficult when they are in difficulties. But I feel the joy as they feel joy, you know. That's kind of, it's, it's transferring to me as well. I'm just a surgeon, not a, you know, their family or friend. But that I believe what I, I think, that, you know, where I found it, where I learned it is from you, I guess. It, it is something, you know, I got it. But uh, when I saw you hugging your patients and you, they were always so, I mean, I can tell their faces, you know, their faces are, are emotionless when they're sitting at the lobby, mm -hmm. but when they first see you, they become a different person. They become very happy and joy of life. How, how did you, I mean, start it? I'm sure your father, my father have much in common and we're, we're, we're loving, intimate people. I mean, you call one of the, one of the, one of our mentors, Papa, I yeah. mean, you know, you're a very <laughs> intimate guy. Um, so it, it, it's it's innate. It's in our genes, in mm. yours and my genes. So and, and you're good at it. And so not only are you a great sales person <laughs> when it comes to getting that, yeah. that implant put in the guy, mm. they, the patients love you and you do a great job. But but I it was it was Victor Politano and you know the name mm. Politano. The Politano led better reimplantation. Mm. It was something that we learned a long time ago. Mm. He was my my chief and he was a big Italian fella and he would take the time and sit down and he would put his hand in like look look how close <laughs> like right here on the patient <laughs> right very intimate you know mm -hmm. and just and but but I would watch that patient mm -hmm. melt mm -hmm. and I was like I, you know there's nothing wrong with with being intimate with your your patients mm -hmm. and um when you when you do it, yeah, it's, it has to relate to better outcomes, and it definitely relates to a much better practice, you know. And like I said, look around, look around at all the mm. great donated gifts. But I saw him do that, and that stuck with me. But it's got to be in your genes, and I'm sure that if my father and your father met, they would be brothers right away. Uh, something similar to that. I guess you know the the reason why you are able to do that is because you have a good successful outcomes otherwise if you I, I saw some you know physicians they are setting up emotional barrier between them and the patients right let's say if they if they are too close then it's a, like a, something bad happens to your friend you can't you really feel bad right but if you already set a barrier they become a different in, individual then you really don't feel anything from them you know what happens to them you know that's what I saw in. Yeah, so, so yeah, if you have worse practices. outcomes, you 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 would it set set a barrier up. That's now I haven't thought of it that way, but that's that's got to be true. Mm. And, I, and I'm looking at some certain people that I know that don't have the greatest outcomes, and they're kind of nasty with their patients, about probably to protect themselves. Yeah. I can see that being being the case. You know what? I guess that's the reason why you become a happy person. You made them happy. Right? Mm -hmm. You make them intimate. Like, a, you know, like a ignoring the bond between, happening between the surgeon and the patient and they have to pretend they, they don't care, right? Yeah. Living a life like that is, a, is a, just a masquerade. Yeah. They can't live their own life. Right. But by living your own life, not lying, I will say, not masquerading yourself, not faking yourself, and you show them in truth, you know, honest and transparency. I got, I got it now. Your transparency is the reason why you are able to, you know, most of the patients so far, uh, my patients are over their 50s or 60s. They have their own wisdom to choose who they want. Right. So when I first started, I had nothing. <laughs> I was just starting, right? So I had to exaggerate myself, but uh, it wasn't the right thing, I guess. I got it over, you know. I just had to admit that I'm a new guy. 
I'm a, I'm a younger, I mean, I have not that much experience, but what I can do is uh, I will do my best. That I, how I, you know, I'll say evolved over the time. I become more transparent. And then patients were, I was surprised. They chose me to be their surgeon, you know. Maybe it's a, you know, a stage of overcoming myself, admitting that, you know, I'm nothing but a, you know, surgeon, but these days, you know, as I become more honest and transparent, patients love it. That's what I found. I didn't get it, what you just said, until last year. And this year at the AUA, where they ask us to discuss where experts get in trouble. Mm. Like, and I guess they wanted us to, wanted me to talk about difficult cases. And the first thing that I brought up was exactly what you just said, which is experts get in trouble when they're not completely transparent. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. And it took me till 57, and you got it already. No. 40, around 40. <laughs> um, and, and, I was, and, and it was great to look across the room and say, because I've done it myself, you know, describe why you used which implant, or here and which implant, there, describe exactly what anatomical changes the patient's gonna experience. And the more transparent you are, and the more honest you are with both yourself and the patient, the happier that patient is going to be. Mm. Not only because you're setting expectations, but they, 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 they trust you. And, they, and right. they trust you with their one dick, yeah. as you said. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 that's, that, was, that was something, that was the, a light bulb that came to me last year, mm. and, and you got it already, yeah. which is, I, I've always said, and if I'm supposed to be looking at a camera, I don't know if I'm looking at a camera, I've always said that you are the prime example of what a, a, what a niche surgeon should do. They should go see everybody. You, you actually went way above and beyond. You went around, around the world looking at what everybody does. And then you took the, the best of everybody and, and made the hybrid that is now Sean Park. <laughs> so, you know, anybody that goes to your office is going to walk out happy and you're going to, I hope you're as happy as I am when you're, <laughs> old man like me. <laughs> no, you are not old at all.